Hi guys and a happy new year and welcome to the January 2018 episode of Books and Blankets. This is a podcast where we talk about all things bookish and cosy. I'm Mercedes and I have a booktube channel over at Mercy's Bookish Musings and my co-host is... I'm Lauren and I have a booktube channel over at Lauren and the Books. You can reach us um, on our Twitter account, which is at Books and Blanket, on Instagram, which is Books and Blankets Podcast, or you can email us, Books and Blankets Podcast at gmail.com. Happy New Year, Mercedes. And a Happy New Year to you too. Uh, happy... I realise you said 2018. I never say 2018, I always say 2018. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. I say either. Yeah, I don't think I've ever said 20, like 20, 2010, 20 this, yeah. It's feel like that's an American thing. What are you doing? I think it's because, but then you probably do as well. Like, at work, I always have to talk dates that are very far in the future. So I just use a short mm. version, which would be to say 20 rather than 2000. God, what a gripping thing to get everyone started. I know. Asking about how we say the year. Uh, what are you reading at the moment? Well, I'm reading five things, so... Bloody hell! I know, so I'm going to just, like, whiz through these, because, you know. Whiz. Right, so I'm reading On the Black Hill by Bruce Chatwin, which is published in the 80s, so I'm very happy about that, because I've had it for a couple of years and need to read it. It's about two brothers who grow up in Wales, and it's literally the moment of their birth until they're in their 80s. Nice. I'm reading a short story collection called What the World Will Look Like When All the Water Leaves Us by Laura Vandenberg. I realise I own three of her short story collections and haven't read any of them so needed to get on it and she writes sort of they're realist they're quite bleak stories but i'm enjoying them then i'm reading folk by zoe gilbert which is out i saw your instagram uh, post of it yesterday looked very cozy it is yeah it's um it's out in early february and it's sort of a fantasy it's inspired by folk tales it's it's being marketed as a novel but a lot of people would view it as a short story collection Oh yeah, but all the stories are set in the same village, and like the characters are mentioned again. But oh nice, yeah. So it's all sort of interwoven. Then I'm listening to an audio book called The Shell Seekers by Rosamond Pilcher, and this is the sort of thing. It's like Maeve Binchy sort of thing. Yeah. But when I went back to work, cozy. I shoot, yeah, very cozy, and in a way, a tiny bit dated in terms of like the gender stuff because it's written right. in the 80s. But when I went back to work on Tuesday, I was really depressed. So I just oh. wanted a pod- an audio book that was really easy and cosy and talked about like cute cottages and food and stuff like that. And you've got that. I've got that. And then I've started reading a non-fiction book called The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colour Blindness by Michelle Alexander. But I've only read you... the intro. So Have you read that before? No, I've kept saying I'm going to. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so I thought that could be my first non-fiction read of the year. Good. Five. Well done. Uh, I've got three on the go at the moment. I'm currently reading something that I'm not enjoying at all. It's a crime book. I'm reading it for my book club at work. I've got to have it read by Tuesday. I haven't even read 100 pages. Do you always finish them because it's for a book club or do you sometimes just give up? I really, really try to. This one, I've left it too late and I'm not going to. It's, um, oh my God, Black Eyed Susans by Julia. Oh yeah, yes. Simon didn't like it, did he? Yeah, so I haven't watched his video about it yet because I knew I'd be reading it. So I didn't want to spoil myself for it. But it's just jointed and it's it's the same person um like but multiple perspectives so her when she was oh, okay. after what happened and then her now but it just feels it doesn't flow very nicely like it's just yeah I'm just not loving it like I've really had to force myself to read it and my plan for this weekend was to like read 100 pages on Saturday 100 pages on Sunday and I've just not even read 100 pages at all yet Mercedes so um that which I'm not very much enjoying but I probably won't finish it, but I do try. That's the only time I force myself through a book is if it's for book club. Do you not feel like just saying that you liked it, like you disliked it enough to give up is like good enough? Well, no, because I feel like, because I have to, because I run the book club. I have oh, to ask okay. Like that. So I have to sort of know what happens. It has yeah. happened a few times where it's got there and I haven't finished it. And I've just sort of said like, I didn't finish it guys. What happened in the end? That yeah. sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that. I'm also reading, David got me a book called A Hundred Nasty Women of History, which is a nonfiction book, which I've just been sort of like reading um, a little in like a little thing about each woman, um, maybe like in the bath and things like that. They're really funny. That's, I'm really, really enjoying that. And then I'm listening to the audio book of um, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Oh, cool. Which I'm really enjoying. It's nothing like what I thought it was going to be at all. I thought it was going to be sort of, it starts off very lighthearted, um, but it's quite a sad and yeah do you know how i describe it because i read it last year oh, read it? oh i didn't know you'd read yeah. it yeah i would describe it as a adult darker version of jacqueline wilson yes 
absolutely yeah really but uh, like but when I started reading it because I went to it not knowing anything about it so I started reading it and it opens with her going for well not opens but like going for a bikini wax that's one of the first things she has yeah, done and yeah oh, um I was thinking oh this is quite and there's like she speaks quite openly and like yeah abrupt, do I mean abrupt, very, blunt, I isn't she? Yeah, very blunt um about things and I was like oh this is what this is going to be like and then quite quickly it sort of like unfurled into this really sad story of her sort of existence yeah. um but about halfway through now but the, the the woman who's doing the um the audio is amazing because well, Eleanor yeah. herself isn't Scottish but everyone around her is and she does the accent really really well and like I just feel like it's I'm really enjoying it yeah I was going to go for the audio route because I listened to the sample and I really thought she was good um and then for whatever reason I didn't but I've heard really good things about the audio yeah so yeah I'm, I'm listening to that at the moment so three pretty pretty good well apart from the crappy crime thing but yeah very much enjoying um the audio which is exciting because I, I, I don't often listen to um fiction on audio no I don't yeah it's that I really like I feel very pleased about yeah it's, it's also reminding I'm enjoying it like in very much the same way as I enjoyed um, My Name is Leon by I Kip was going to say also it's like that <laughs> yeah I didn't listen to that on audio either but you said it was really good didn't you yeah so it's, it's very similar to that they're, they're both so Lenny Henry did the audio for that um, but he again had a very wide range of accents and voices and tones and he just yeah they're, they're both very 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 good voice actors these guys good how cosy are you I'm pretty cosy. I have a blanket wrapped around my shoulders. I've got a jumper on in my pyjamas. And it's very sunny here. Is it sunny where you are? Really sunny, like, but lovely. Like, coming through the windows on my face. Yeah, nice. yeah it's nice. It's very clear so, and blue skies. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty cosy. I've got my new um, dressing gown on that I got for Christmas. It's lovely. It's navy and it's got, like, star constellations on it in silver. Oh, David's mum and dad got it for me. And then I've got David's new blanket that he got off my parents for Christmas. And it's, you know, like when you get a brand new blanket and it's just the softest thing ever. Yeah, and it's yeah. sullied. It's on me now. I'm sullying it now. <laughs> yeah. Very cosy. No candles, but I've got a nice cup of tea. Me too. As good as that perfect cup of tea you had when no, we started. and we, we had some technical difficulties at the top of this, didn't we? For an hour. Yeah, for an hour, and um, I ha- it was all because I had iMovie open, and it wasn't, so that was fun in the end that we found out that was going on. Yeah, and I had a perfect cup of tea, and I went cold because of the panic of the audio not working, and then Johnny made me another cup of tea, and it's not perfect. My cup of tea's okay, David, I, I like to wait for my tea to get almost, not cold, but definitely like gulpable. Me too, yeah. I don't, eat, I don't enjoy a hot cup of tea. I used to work for a doctor. And I used to make him a cup of tea and he used to drink it like the second I gave it to him. I don't know how people do that. Me neither. It's insane. Madness. Yeah. Um, today we are going to be talking about our 2018 reading goals. We're going to recap slightly on 2017. And we're going to mention three books each. Although I've got four. Sorry. Um, that, yeah, I know. That we're looking forward to in the first half of this year. Oh, duh. I've just spilt tea on David's new blanket. Oh, you have sullied it. A lot as well. I'm going to be in trouble for that. He's already pleased with me because of the uh, the Skype bother. Yeah. <laughs> what coloured oh, blanket? Um, not tea coloured. So you're not going to be able to hide it's, it. Um, white, red, oh. and beige stripes, and I've just put tea all over it oh, no. on the white side as well, which is lovely. Oh, well what done, you should though. do is later. Don't mention it. And then mm. later on, very kindly make him a cup of tea and then nudge him. Absolutely, I'm definitely going to do that. And so then he'll think it's his his tea stain. Also, oh, Dave, you ruined that lovely new. <laughs> My mum and dad got you. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, let's start talking about 2017. How was 2017 as a reading year for you, Miss Sadie? Shite. Yeah. <laughs> No, it wasn't horrendous, but it was, it was it wasn't it was the worst one since I've had a but channel. That, that hasn't come as a surprise to me because no. whenever I spoke, like you were always saying, always going on about it. Oh, I wish, <laughs> yeah, but you were always saying, I wish this reading year was as good as other years. Or you were looking at books yeah. you'd read in other years and feeling like you hadn't felt the same about any of those books. Yeah, that you had. How many books did you read? One hundred and thirteen. Oh, that's bloody good though. What was your goal on Goodreads? Two hundred. But yeah. what happened is I weren't going to make a go all on Goodreads, and then I had a moment of like sudden excitement on like December the thirty first, twenty 
2016 and I just set it to 200 and I knew it was ridiculous at the time but because I don't really feel pressure for my Goodreads goal to be honest no. until um I filmed this year's video and had to re-watch that one I'd forgotten I did it oh right so it, yeah I like the Goodreads goal is is meaningless to me really like I do it out of interest but I don't care it's more of a log it. isn't it yeah yeah so um so I didn't get anywhere near 200 and do you feel like, are there any books that you read this year, that you, uh, last year, sorry, God, I'm still not in, in the future, um, like in terms of your reading, do you feel like any books you read this year would go on your best books of all all time? Oh, that's a good question. I don't think they would. Oh, really? I mean, I, I'm going to just, I still haven't filmed my favourite books of 2017 yet. I know, and I was wondering if that was ever going to happen. Yeah, because I, I, I am, I am. Are. And I'm aware that the calibre, like, for example, some of the books that are going to make it would have in previous years only made it to honourable mentions. Right, OK. Um, and I'm going to say all that in the video because obviously I don't want to, you know, make it come across that these books are as good as the usual stuff. Um, and some of them are, but um, some of them aren't. Um, but if I... Yeah, I think that's a good question. I hadn't considered that. I don't think a single one of them would make it to... No, no, they wouldn't. 100% wouldn't. Yeah. And in previous years they have. I've had a few that have then become favourite books of all time. None of these have. Yeah, so I had a, a slightly better year than you. I I feel like there are some books. For instance, I read The Post-Birthday World this year, which I adored, yeah, and that is yeah. one of my favourite books of all time On my now. recommendation? On Mercedes' recommendation. On this very podcast, in fact. You yeah. heard it here first, guys. Um, I also read The Stand in Chandelier by Lionel Shriver. I really think you should read that, Mercedes. If you liked Post-Birthday World, I think you'll really like The Stand yeah, in Chandelier. Yeah, I will, definitely. It's yeah. only 120 pages as well. It's a little novella. Yeah. Very, very good. Um, so t those two in particular. Um, and I also feel like this year, because I discovered Lionel Shriver this year as well, so that also feels exciting to me. Yeah. Uh, because I hadn't read... Well, I hadn't read any of those books, and now I've read two, and they've both been five star reads for me. So I've had a slightly better year. I read 139 books. Yeah. Um, I set my goal on Goodreads at 150. You got close. Um, yeah, I did get close, and there were moments where I was like, oh, I feel like maybe I should just smash through a few picture books to actually get there. But yeah, I think next year, well, I've already decided that I'm only um, I've set my goal at 100 um, because I want to read some bigger books. I feel like towards the end of last year, I was like. Like The Little Stranger, for instance. I didn't persevere with that because I was like, oh, this is going to take me too long and I need to get back to her. Yeah, I hate so, that. I don't yeah, think like so, that at all, but I used to, but now it doesn't. I'm not going to do it anymore. So I was watching um, Sophie from Portal in the Pages um, talk about it, and she says she uses her Goodreads as a minimum, and I feel like that's a really good way to look at it, isn't it? So set it a lot so lower. She, and she then... sets it at D. Yeah. And then she just thinks if she read, like if she if she's ever behind, that's when, and, and like that, that would work so much better for me. Yeah, so I've I just... because I've read over a hundred books for the past four years, so that's yeah. not going to be a bother for me. But I feel like I want to afford myself the opportunity to read some some really big books, which I hadn't read last year because of my stupid brain. Yeah, so I set mine to one hundred and fifty, um, and the only reason I've done that is because the happiest year I've had in reading was when I read just over one hundred and fifty, and that was in twenty fifteen. Yeah. Is it bothering you every time I say it like that? By the way. 2050. I'm just yeah. cringing. I'm like, yeah. oh. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, I didn't even fucking notice you said yeah, that. Yeah, um, I'm noticing every time I do it now. <laughs> um, so thanks for that. Um, yeah. So and that was a really good year for me. So I'm not bothered if I don't hit it at all. Um, but that would be my happy number, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel. I, I say that like, oh, I don't feel bothered about hitting it, but I obviously do because at some points last year I was like, I'm not reading long books or I'm not persevering with books that are going to take me a little bit longer because I yeah, so you were aware yeah. of it so yeah, I completely forget to be honest by about February I forget what my good reason number is oh no I don't and I, I'm very aware of like um you know like they have a little italic line underneath that says like you are this many books ahead or you're this it. many books behind so yeah I'm um but I really feel I mean I've read two books this year already and yeah I just feel like I'm just excited I'm excited about reading some big books I've got some really big books that I want to read I've got yeah. some books I started last year and then didn't read and things like that. So I feel I feel positive. Have you got any goals? I I do. Um, a lot of them are really loose, and the only strict goals I have are more to do with um, the number of books I own. Yeah. Rather than like what I'm going to read. Um, so I think we both said we have sort of we've been quite free with our goals this year. Yeah. Um, so I just noticed some things about my reading last year, um, and that is that. 
I read very little nonfiction, but when I do, I absolutely love it. Mm. And I feel like it's partly because a lot of the nonfiction I really enjoy um, is sort of serious um, social issue nonfiction. Yeah. And because a lot of the reading I do is like in the evening when it's dark before bed, for some reason I've got it in my head that reading those sort of books after nine o'clock isn't doesn't work because like that's when I should be chilling out. No. Oh. And so whenever I've got one of those books like that I'm currently reading, I'll go, oh, we can't read it now because you're supposed to be chilling out for to go to sleep sort of thing. No. Oh. So then I just don't read them. But actually, that's quite silly because if I don't go to bed till midnight, which I don't, and most of my reading takes place between 9 p.m. and 12. You're shutting off a lot of what you can read. Exactly. So I just need to wipe that. So I want to read yeah. Wonder Fiction and more short story collections because I really missed them. But they're like just things I would like to do and I think I'd enjoy them. They're not like, you know, I haven't set any numbers or anything like that. So what about you? Yeah. I've um I've, I've said 100 books that I'd like to read. Um, again, sort of unofficially, like there's no way of me actually like taking this data down but would like to read longer books and also um i've mentioned this in a few of my my videos as well so apologies for repeating myself but i feel very um privileged and happy to be in the position of getting sent quite a lot of proofs and books that um are due out like i get them before they're actually due out and i never fucking read any of them so this year i've sort of made it my goal which i know isn't something you struggle with you're very good at that aren't you oh no i mean i'm i'm <sighs> I'm good in that I read them, but I'm bad in that I get sent way too many to read in time. So, yeah, like, so I'm being very selective with what I'm actually yeah, being sent. Definitely. But the stuff that I've actually requested, I don't want to request it and then sit on it for ages. I want to actually read it before it's due out or read it around the time yeah. it's due out. Because, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've, I'm, I've been very guilty of in the past sort of requesting someone getting in touch and saying, oh, can I send you this? And is there anything else? And me saying, oh, yeah, could you send me this and this? And then they just sit on my shelf for ages. So yeah, yeah. if I'm requesting them, it's because I want to read them. So, and, and I would like to read some new releases. Like last year, I don't, I don't feel like I read many new releases. So I'm the opposite. But you're doing the opposite, yeah. Yeah, see, when, when I heard you say that in one of your videos recently, I was like, that's so funny because I'm literally the opposite because I'm aware that in 2016, I started to ramp up the amount of new releases. And then last year, I was just so absorbed in it. And it's, it's difficult, right? Because we're going to discuss a few books we're excited about in the second half of the podcast and when I was looking last night to try and choose my ones I started to think oh my god I'm going to just do it again because it's so exciting yeah um and how last year I was like at the start of the year was like oh my god this is an amazing release year now I'm looking back and thinking hmm, last year wasn't a brilliant release year but this year looks like it's going to be do you know what I mean yeah um, and I can just get myself in that trap again so I want to definitely be more selective um, yeah. And sometimes that's just going to be not requesting a book and seeing if the library has it. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I can read just the chapter. And if it's not, you know, delighting me, then I can just take it back. And there's no guilt that I requested it and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Um. So, yeah, but I definitely want to try and read older books because a lot of my favourite books are older books. And I'm just not giving myself the opportunity to, to pick them up, so... How do you feel about um, like prize winners and and uh, long lists and things for this year? Is that something? Because I feel like last year I didn't read the long list for the Women's Prize for Fiction, and this year I feel like I really do want to read it. Last year I I got sent nearly all of them, mm. um, and I read a few, but um, but not many. And the same with the Man Booker, I read a few, but not many. Um, I don't think I will ever want to do a long list I, I admire people who do but I know I'll have to push myself through a lot of them because you know the likelihood is, is if there's 12 books let's say that yeah you're not like, going to love all of them no, are you? you're not and I, and I just don't want to be a situation where I'm reading a book just to review it um because it, it will just make me angry um so I, I find the, those prize lists interesting I find both of them are just not quite right for me because I find the woman's prize for fiction is perhaps a tad too commercial Mm. And I find the Man Booker Prize is perhaps a tad too like intellectual. You need something in the middle. I want something that's sort of in the middle. The Mercedes Prize. Yeah. So <laughs> I like having a look at what's on both of them, but I'm yeah. like, I'm never going to be one of those people who um who reads all of them. Hey, I like last year when I was watching people read them, I was thinking, and I I'm I lean much more towards the the Women's Prize just because like. Me I too. Yeah, definitely. I I really want to champion more of that um so yeah but i feel i feel like i would like to do give that a go 
because I noticed when the Costa was being announced as well, I hadn't read anything on those lists. And I was like, how have I got to this point where I haven't read, like there was like 16 books there and I haven't read any of them. Mm. And I, I felt a bit like that for the long list as well, um, for the for the Women's Prize, because I'd only read First Love and Stay With Me. And I was like, I'm supposed to be, like I read fucking shitloads and how have I only read two books out of this 12 Yeah, but I think a list, lot of people so... were surprised by the, the the woman's long list. Yeah. A lot of people thought they were going to have read more books on the list and they actually ended up reading because they did choose a few ones that hadn't been released yet and stuff like that, didn't they? Yeah. So. But yeah, I think I'm going to have a little, I'm going to have a little bit more of a look at that this year as well. Yeah, um, I just find, and... I just end up feeling really sad because there'll be some books I'm like, they have to be on that list. And yeah, when they're and not, they're I just not. feel like, well, you guys must be like bad judges because if that's not on there, then you've made a big mistake. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I'll read some of the books that have made, and they'll be nowhere near as good. And I'll just be like, obviously, we don't, we don't have the same taste, so you know. No, and all, like that, they're, they're all so different, aren't they? Those books as well, like, yeah. like you say, there's just, there's never going to be something. There's not going to be a list of twelve books that you're going to love everything on there, is there? No, and you know, all of the judges involved are having to compromise, right? Because. They're not all, like, as an individual judge, they're not going to get the 12 books that they wanted on there. They're going to have to go, okay, well, I really wanted this one, uh, but you really wanted this one, but we both liked this one, so we'll, you know? Yeah. So, um, and that's just obviously how it has to work. But, yeah, basically what I'm saying is I want my own prize because I just want to read 12 books that I think are amazing. The books and Blanket 12 and that amazing book that Mercedes likes. Yeah. <laughs> That would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it certainly would. And we won't have a um, we won't have a prize giving. We'll just have a night where we lay on the sofa in the pajamas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Drinking tea. So obviously, I think I've said to you like my big goals are to do with reducing the amount of books I own. Yeah. Are you bothered about that at all? Or I don't. I don't feel that bothered about it. To be honest, I don't. I. I don't. I've never viewed my book buying as a as a problem. Um, I don't. I have got rid of a lot of books at the beginning of um, this year. I've got three bags of which that I'm going to um, going to get rid of. But I I would like to read some of the books. So what what I've done is, like I said, I've, I've requested books from publishers before, and um, people have bought me books and things like that stuff that I wouldn't necessarily read. And now everything on my shelf is something that I would read. Okay, yeah, so, that's what, me too. Yeah. Yeah. So I've gone from having a shelf probably like double the size that I did have of unread books with half of which were just there like they were never going to be read and things like that so now everything on that book that bookshelf I would read yeah um and I do want to get through the TBR but it's not like stressing me out or anything yeah so how many do you know how many unread books you have I haven't counted actually I was at about 200 so just just on the basis that I feel like I've got rid of about half of them I would probably say about 100 yeah see that's where it's, it's, I sort of feel like that would be my sort of comfortable number and the reason I I want to reduce it I think that there's there's loads of reasons and mine is the sort of one that like I find the least common like when mm. I hear like a lot of people say it's because of like the consumerism of owning so many books and blah 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 yeah. and the number stresses me out and that isn't it at all really it's not that having a vast amount of unread books stresses me out and it's not the money because in all honesty the majority of books I got last year were sent to me free for review which obviously I'm really grateful for so I didn't even spend um a dramatic amount of money on books last mm. year um it's more what I don't like about it is the pace I read compared to the books I own yeah so you're getting more in yeah and the problem is the time. is there's some books that when I got them I was like oh my god I cannot wait to read this I'm definitely going to read it this month and then I'd be like I'm yeah. definitely going to read it this month and it would go on and on and on for like two years and there's some books that have been in, in the back of my brain as always a constant want to read and two yeah. three years later I still haven't read them yeah and so that's it's nothing to do with the amount I own as if like how much space they're taking up or the money or the, the consumerism issue it's literally that I'm annoyed between the gap they arrive in my house and the gap of when I read them and the only way I can reduce that is by having less books to choose from yeah um and so that's completely what it is for me now it's it's the sadness that there's stories that I've been so excited to get to okay. and you know looking at all my statistics from last year um I think I, I said I ended up reading I think it was like 24 books that I'd owned pre-2017 and at, okay. the st at the start of 2017 I owned 340 books around and out of those 340, last year, I only read 24 of them. 
Mm. And all the other books I read were books that came into my house last year. Yeah. So it just goes to show that I'm way more likely to want to read a book that's new. True. And so, therefore, if I just keep buying books, what's going to happen is I'm going to read 50% of the ones that have arrived, and the other 50% are going to just go sit back on the shelves, and they're just going to sit there and wait. Oh, dear. So what are you going to do? Are you so going to it? I've given myself, and this is like the only sort of strict rule I have, and to be honest, I previous years I've seen people do like zero by whatever or um, all these strict rules about not buying books and I thought there's no way I'll ever be comfortable with doing that but I yeah. feel so comfortable and so 100% confident with the rule I've got and I know I don't know how long that's going to last but at the moment I feel like this is no worries so, um, us to tell us the rule. so the rule is that I have to every month so I currently own 200 at the start of the year 208 unread books on my shelves yeah. And each month, I want to reduce that number by nine. Very good. Which would get me to 100 books at the end of the year. Which is a nice position. Yeah. So that doesn't mean I have to read nine books every month. It means I have to like, oh. get rid of nine. So, for example, say I only manage eight, then I have to choose a book to get rid of. Very good. Very, and, very good. And that means that DNFs will count as well because they, I'll, I won't keep them. They won't be on my shelves. Yeah, that's and cool. I, and I do DNF. Um, obviously, the likelihood of DNF and now is going to be lower because I've got rid of a lot of the, like stuff yeah. on my shelves I'm not as interested in and I'm going to be way harsher about what comes into my home um, yeah. so nine books to remove which will probably end up being sort of seven or eight to read because there'll be some DNFs or whatever mm -hmm. um, but then obviously I'm still going to allow myself to get new books because I'll never be able to be a person who doesn't do that so what's the rule with the new so books? the rule with the new books is that I have to read them within six weeks of them coming into my home very good so I'm going to put a post-it note on them the day they arrive yeah with the I deadline remember. date of when they've got to be read by very, very good. And I'm really excited about that because it will mean that, like, I'm tempted now. I'm looking at all the books that are coming out and I'm thinking, oh, my God, I really want all these, really want all these. But it's making me yeah. be more selective because I'm thinking, well, you've got six weeks. And if 10 of those arrive, then you're just going to spend the next six weeks just reading those 10. And then you're not going to get your nine read that you need to read. That's true. So it's forcing me to not ask for all 10, which is good because looking at my previous like reading years i've had less success with newer releases um and it's the it's the newness of them right it's the excitement that everyone's going to be talking about them and i want to be you know able to join the conversation um which is really nice but at the same time i want there to be a bit more of a balance between old and new so cool it sounds like you got it under control yeah it sounds like you put a lot of thought into it yeah and i i really think it's going to work because like i've read one book off my um like 2017 TBR um, and of four of the books I'm reading at the moment are ones I already owned um, so when I finished all these I'll already have done five and I think I'll finish most of these in a few days time before we've even got to like the 12th yeah. um, so I'll have no worries and then I've had two books come in the house I'll put the post-it notes on them already um, and it's nice because it means I know I'm like I have that excitement and if I stick to my rule then that excitement won't wane because I'll no. read them pretty quickly um, so that will mean that I should have 100 books at the year's end. Well, we'll come back then, won't we, and yeah. decide. And we can say, remember when you said you were only going to have 100 books and now you've got 50,000? Yeah. You won't have 50,000. No. I think this is all doable, and obviously you don't know what's going to happen. I think it's very doable. It's not It's not like pie in the sky. It's actually no. completely doable. And actually, I really like the sort of nine book. Yeah. And if you don't read them, you've got to get rid of some. I think that's good. Yeah, and something I realised as well is that I always say I really love big books, like chunky books, like over 600 pages, and I never reach for them, not as often. And then after looking at all the books I own, I own like less than 10 really big books. Yeah. Like about, I own about 200, and less than 10 of them are really big, and I would have thought I'd have way more than that. Yeah. Um. So actually, like... In terms of reading chunky books, if I read like one a month, then they'll be You've gone. You've done it. Yeah. You've done it. So, like the books I own aren't that even that long. So actually, I think nine a month is, you know, that'd be way scary if I had loads of massive books, but I really don't. So. Doable, completely doable. Yeah, sure is. So let's talk about the books that we're looking forward to this year then. Let's go for it. Do you want to go you first? Wanna... No, you go first. Are you sure? Yeah. Right. So. Limited, I've limited it to three. And we've picked from the first half of the year as well, yeah. so this is just up until the end of June. Because we're going to check in again um, mid-year. Yeah. Um, and I think there's some amazing sounding historical fiction coming out this year. 
and that is exciting. I don't know if all these publishers have come together and decided this is going to be the year of amazing sound and historical fiction books with beautiful covers, but it would appear so. <laughs> so I decided to limit myself to one because there's there's so many that sound great. Um, right. I thought I'm going to go for just one. So I've gone for The Western Wind by Samantha Harvey. It Very comes good. out on the 1st of March. Um, these are all UK publication dates, just to say. As, yeah, as are mine. Yeah, 1st of March. And it's got a beautiful cover for one thing, so do look it up. Um, so it's set in the 15th century, which is a lot earlier than I usually go for with my historical fiction. It's set in a tiny village in Somerset and basically near uh, near a river. And a man is swept away in the river um, and people don't know whether it's an accident, a suicide or a murder. And then basically the book starts to move backwards in time as this local priest is investigating the incident and all the people that are tied into it. Um, But it says it's really sort of mysterious and it's saying for fans of the Essex Serpent and Sarah. I was going to say, yeah, Essex Serpent. Which I am. So um, I'm hoping to really enjoy it. Um, I've never read any of her books before, so I don't know. But um, I really like the sound of it. Who's publishing that? It is, I think... Uh, Jonathan Cape. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so they've published Very a exciting. few good books this year, actually. So, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to that one. Um, so, yeah, that's the 1st of March, The Western Very... Wind. Oh, very exciting. Right, I'm going to get in first with my naughty one, just so we can forget about it. So, my first one is actually two books by the same author. So, uh, the author is Louise O'Neill, um, and she's got a book out this year called Almost Love. That's out on the 1st of March. Um, I've read both of Louise O'Neill's um, books. She's an Irish author. She's um, she's our age, my age, Mercedes. Um, so, and she's written a book um, previously, two books previously that I've read called um, Asking For It and um, Only Ever Yours, mm-hmm. which sort of deal with like teenage women's issues. Like Only Ever Yours I would quite liken to um, The Handmaid's Tale and Asking For It is about a young girl who um, gets raped and she's dressed quite provocatively and she isn't a particularly nice person. Um, and it's as the title would make you lead you to believe that she was asking for that rape. Um, but this new book, um, almost love is about a girl who's got, who's in a relationship with a man who's 20 years, her senior. Um, her books are just really readable and sort of eye opening and educational for even some like, I'm not, particularly the audience I would say the audience is younger than I am but they're still very educational even for me um so I'm quite looking forward to reading Almost Love and it's all about um her relationship with this man who's 20 years older than her and um I, I'm led to believe just by the um the blurb that it's um it's an affair because she is his secret and they only meet in secret and things like that so okay. looking forward to that and she's also um written that's out on the 3rd of May a retelling of um The Little Mermaid a feminist oh, okay. telling of the Little Mermaid called The Surface Breaks. So I'm um, I'm very much looking. Is that quite that short, well. or is that like a full length novel? It, it hasn't given even like looking at the public. There's no front cover for it or anything. It's just got a publication date of the third of May. So I don't know. Oh, okay. But I feel excited about that because yeah, I do good. like her writing, and um, I mean feminist retelling of the Little Mermaid. I'm all over that. Yeah. So that those really two. Good. So I've got my two sneaky. Double one out of the way. So now we can forgive me yep. and forget about it. <laughs> yeah. so what's your next one? My next one, I decided to go for novel, non-fiction and short story collection. Yeah. So this next one is the non-fiction and it's a memoir. Um, it's called The Line Becomes a River by, I'm going to say this wrong, so I apologise, Francisco Cantu. Um, it's also out on the 1st of March and it sounds amazing. So... Um, as I said, it's a memoir, and Francisco was a U.S. Border Patrol agent from 2008 to 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, he worked the desert, which uh, along the Mexican border, um, and he's descended from Mexican immigrants himself, um, so it's sort of um, part of his heritage. Um, and he he works the crossroads of all um, drug routes, smuggling corridors. Um, he tracks people. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's about how it says the line he has sworn to defend is dissolving. Um, haunted by nightmares, he abandons the patrol for civilian life. Um, and when an immigrant friend is caught on the wrong side of the border, he faces a final confrontation with the world he believed he had escaped. Sounds um, like Lord of the Rings. Uh, not yeah. Lord of the Rings. Um, 
Game of Thrones. Oh, right, yeah. But it's, <laughs> it's true, um, which is quite um, terrifying, isn't it? So yeah. um, people are saying it's, you know, in terms of our c- current day understanding of... Yeah. Um, Obviously, Trump wanted to put up this big wall. It's a, a, a first-hand account of, of what it is to know these people who are in these situations, um, and you know, the awful, um, the awful nature of it all. Um, so I'm assuming it's going to be quite devastating. Um, yeah. But it's getting like absolute rave, rave reviews um, from like amazing people um non-fiction writers fiction writers um so yeah i'm really looking forward to that one and i'm hoping that it's going to be um a really interesting memoir oh amazing very very exciting and that's out in march is it yeah first of march lovely stuff well my next one is also non-fiction but in a cookery book way um i mentioned a cookery book in the last time we did this i feel like we did this in the summer last year and i mentioned jb oliver but this year i mentioned in the happy pair recipes for happiness which is also out on the 3rd of may um the happy pair are an irish twin do um twosome um they have a youtube channel at the happy pair and they cook um majority vegan food but also vegetarian i've got two of their other cookbooks i believe i bought one for mercedes how much you, you cooked your whole way through that yet mercedes um, well you bought me it last <laughs> christmas and i yeah. actually felt very bad over the new year um because i never, haven't used it so i've actually marked three recipes i'm going to try oh very good um, but i just need to get myself into gear of uh, buying the ingredients yeah so that, what i will say is I'm, I'm very much a fan of both the boys they're so enthusiastic they're so and their recipes are really accessible but they do use a lot of ingredients so that is something i will, yeah, I will yeah. say to you. but a lot of them are stuff that once you own them you've got them like herbs and stuff that you That's will have forever thought, and you will yeah. you will use again so um but yeah so these are called uh, recipes for happiness i just really like their style their books are really nicely published there's a lot of stuff about community in there and what they set up a, um, a cafe called the happy pair in um oh my god i always forget what it's called Greystones, um just outside of dublin and um yeah there's a lot in, uh, about community in there and things like that so they just have really really nice cookbooks and i just feel like for vegetarians or vegans and this is a really really helpful book to have and i'm looking forward to it coming out very very much so so, so yeah. how, how different is it going to be from the one i've got is it just new recipes or is it well, it's the the tagline is recipes for happiness so there will be new recipes in there but i feel like there might be a lot of comfort food in there and things like that um which i'm very very into yeah um and i like a nice like sunday cook up of like making a big nice dinner that you can just slob and eat in front of the yeah. telly on Sunday and things like that so yeah but I really like and I would encourage if, if anyone um is thinking of becoming a vegan or a vegetarian or even if you are a vegan or a vegetarian then the the um the YouTube channel they've got the food tube channel they've oh, got it's um, really good just, yeah, yeah they're so enthusiastic they aren't are, they? yeah they, they are. really are they did a really good um a series over Christmas called the 12 days of Christmas and they did 12 vegan recipes for um Christmas items on the run up to like and they're so Good well, I was going to say, the cookbook you got me, the one thing I did notice is that it feels like there's less vegan options in British food. Yeah. Because a lot of the recipes they have are um, sort of uh, curries or um, like, they're just not very like British type foods. And it made me no. realise that a lot of the, maybe a lot of the stuff that we cook, like our gravy dinners, um just aren't su- i don't know why aren't they suitable for vegans it'd be interesting if if this is more comfort food if they might have some more sort of um i don't know like your traditional gravy dinners and stuff yeah like a gravy dinner yeah me too nice comfy gravy dinner yeah so. although i do love curries as well so yeah i do i've really actually just, just as an aside i also got a very very good book for christmas called the 15 minute vegan by katie burskoff mm. um and that is like all of the recipes in there take 15 minutes or less like around the 15 minute mark hardly any of them have got more than i would say eight ingredients and they're just amazing and there's a lot of comfort food and stuff in there so i should try and get that yeah it's really really good and like i've been cooking from it david and i had cinnamon toast from it this morning um which was really really nice and she she started off with a blog um and then that's just become a book and things like that but really really good hardly any ingredients everything takes around 15 minutes very 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 oh, that impressive good. That. So that's just as an aside that's just a bonus one you can have that one for free you're getting lots of bonus ones in there aren't you lots of bonus <laughs> <laughs> what's your last one then Mercedes my last one of three yes well done it is um, a short story collection called Florida by Lauren Groff and she oh. wrote um Fates and Furies Fates and Furies yeah did you read that 
Yes, I read it last year. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, have you read any more other stuff? No, I've got one of... Have I got one of our short story collections? I had one. I had another one which had almost identical, like the same sort of cover as Fates and Furies, but I got rid of it because I just didn't think I was ever going to read it. Yeah, I don't know if I've got any of our other books. I'm not quite sure. Oh, no, I did. I had The Monsters of Templeton. Um, and to be honest, I started and I didn't like it, so I got rid of it. But this sounds amazing. Uh, I've got high hopes for this one. <laughs> yeah, the reason is, is um, so it says, because... I'm not going to describe it as well as as well as this does. Over a decade ago, Groff moved to her adopted home state of Florida. The stories in this collection span characters, towns, decades, even centuries. But Florida, its landscape, climate, history and state of mind become their gravitational centre. Storms, snakes and sinkholes lurk at the edge of everyday life. But the greater threats and mysteries are of a human, emotional and psychological nature. Ooh. And I really like short story collections that are themed yeah um particularly themed by by stuff like um environment or location yeah um and i know last year um i and lots of other people were really excited by an essay collection called sunshine state by sarah gerard which was um sort of marketed as a collection of essays focused on florida um and i started reading it haven't finished it um and I was really enjoying it, but I know lots of people were disappointed because actually there wasn't a very big focus on Florida. Right. Um, so I think that this could be the fictional version of that that everyone was hoping it was going to be. Um, because this is 100% loads of stories all set in Florida. Very um, good. And it's being published by um, William Heinemann on the 4th of June in the UK. Um, they haven't released the cover yet, but I will say it's also being published in the US this year. And the US cover is stunning. Is it? Yeah. I loved the front cover for Fate and, Fates and Furies, though. I saw it so on paperback, hardback, yeah. every time. Amazing. Yeah, definitely. So, I yeah, so that's true. We'll hope that if they did the UK version of Fates and Furies good, this will be really good as well. Yeah. The American edition um, of Florida has a cat on the front, like a wild cat. Oh, we like a wild cat. Yeah, so... I just hope they go with that sort of route for R1 as well, but we shall see. So I was worried, but I'm more hopeful now you mentioned the Fates and Furies cover because you're right, it is very beautiful. Yeah, very, very beautiful. Reminded me of David Bowie, the Yeah, hardcover. me too, yeah. I got the hardcover out from the library and never got round to reading it, and then I bought the paperback, and the paperback was lovely. It was like um, teal with, like, yellow flowers on it. It's absolutely Oh, I gorgeous. remember. Yeah, it was different, yeah. yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah, really, really, really lovely. So that's exciting. So the last one I've got. So even though I had two, we're both quite excited about this last one I've yeah, got. Yes. So, um, and that is Three Things About Elsie by Joanna Cannon, which is out on the 11th of January. Not long to wait for that now. Do you have the proof of this? No, I don't know. Um, neither. So the front cover, just before we get into what's actually inside it, the front cover looks amazing. It's like a, um, a Battenberg cake yeah. with jigsaw puzzle pieces on it. Yeah. Um, so we both read and loved The Trouble with Goats and Sheep. Did you read it last year? I read it last year. Did you read, read it last year? Yeah, I did. But yeah, last year, uh, I think in about March or April. Yeah, so that was a lovely, cosy sort of child perspective, crime book, just wonderful. And yeah. um, I've just got really high hopes for three things about Elsie, which follows um, the character of Elsie, who's in a um, sort of sheltered accommodation, isn't she? Not sheltered, yeah. like um, old people's home. And yeah. um, the starts with her falling, falling over and you learn things about Elsie as the story goes on. So I feel really excited about this. Yeah, yeah. What do you, are you, are you, is there anything about it you're very excited about? Well, I feel like I, so if you gave me the blurbs of the two, this one and the previous, I'd be more excited about the trouble of goats and sheep because as yeah. you know, I love a young child narrator. Yeah. However, I feel like if she was going to do anything other than a young child narrator, an older person is a good way to it's go. Way to go. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. And I think it just, you know, it says that it's sort of, talking about human experience and what people will do for one another or, or what or the, you know the small cruelties people will do um i feel this this one's going to be sadder yeah so simon has said to us both hasn't he that it was very 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 sad the so... trouble of goats and sheep isn't really is it? i mean there's a few no. moments with one of the neighbors um who's sort of a bit of a loner that where i felt a bit yeah. sorry for him but it wasn't awful no. um and i feel like this one's going to be a bit more upsetting yeah um so yeah but i'm very excited yeah very excited for it so yeah so there's um seven books that we're very excited about um, also i'm just going to quickly mention just because i don't know if you know about it this bit cheap i'm going to do it anyway did you know that kit de a new book coming out oh yes she has i don't think you knew um 29th of march 
Oh my god! I have, I didn't see that at all. I've been looking at like new releases. What's it called? It's called The Trick to Time. The Trick to Time. Yeah, and it says I'm going to tell you about it anyway. Yeah. Um, it's set in 1972 in Birmingham. Amazing. You're going to like it because it's about a young Irish girl. Lovely. Um, and on her first night out in Birmingham, she meets um a charming Irish boy. Um, and basically they start this big love affair, get uh, married and get pregnant really quickly. And then there's this big tragedy. And then the story is set decades later and it's all about their memories and whatever. Oh, my God, that sounds amazing. So it sounds really different. To be honest, based on that blurb, I wouldn't pick it up. Because it I sounds, would. Which, because it sounds like young love, something yeah. goes wrong, whatever. And it doesn't sound like the sort of thing I'd pick up. But in her hands, I have complete faith. So, yeah, I'm very excited about it. Oh, I am excited about that. Oh, that is exciting. Yeah. And this, awesome. listen to this um, thing that someone said about it. Authentic and beautiful, urgent and honest, this novel does what only the best do. It quietly makes room in your heart. Oh, how lovely. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Who said that? I want to read stuff that that person's written. Chris Cleave. Oh, he's written, um, I've read a few of his books. Uh, the Other Hand, have you read that? No, I haven't read any of his stuff, no. Yeah, I've read, um, I've read a few, and the other one, there was one about um, Olympic cyclists, two girl Olympic cyclists. I can't think what that one's called. Gold. It might just be called Oh, Gold. yeah, yeah. I think Gold. I've heard of that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, very good. Oh, well, look, Chris Cleave sneaking in at the end and getting to mention a couple of his books as well. So, yeah. well, Chris Cleave. So, yeah, so those are some books that we're very excited about. What books are you guys excited about? We'd love to hear if there's Oh, any... yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot of good stuff coming out this year. Yeah. Feel as very... I said, lots of historical fiction. Yeah. Um, and I will say, obviously, we go with UK publication dates. Um, but I could do a whole episode about US publication dates because I, I find that, um, you know, I see US booktubers say, oh, you know, we're having to wait. Like, they have to wait, for example, for Joanna Cannon, Sarah yeah. Moss, Sarah Perry. They have to wait longer. Um, but there's loads of amazing sound and stuff that tends to be um, either nonfiction or from indie presses that we have to wait so yeah. much longer for. Um, there's some amazing nonfiction coming out from the US this year. Um, some amazing books by African-American authors, which will probably take us ages to get. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's there's so much stuff. We I won't go into it all here because there's a lot, um, but I'm going to have to try and um, get my hands on some of it because it, it just sounds like a really um, bumper year for for amazing books. So, fingers so crossed. We're both excited. Yeah. So, what are you going to read next? So, obviously, I've got quite a few on the go. But, you have, haven't you? But... I probably will finish them all sort of in a couple of days because I'm yeah. quite a bit in tall and they're, all of them are quite short, to be honest. Um, well, we were going to buddy read The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara <laughs> Kingsolver. We're going to read it next month, though, Mercedes. It's not like it's written off forever. Yeah, so, so I was very excited. I wanted to pick it up in December and I thought, no, I'll wait for wait January. For so, um, <laughs> so that's a big book. Um, and I, instead, I think I'm going to substitute it for another big book. And I'm feeling like I want to read wintry stuff because yeah. I've got a lot of it. So I'd like to read it in the next few months before spring starts. So I think I'm going to pick up The Prophets of Eternal Fjord by, I'm going to say this wrong, Kim Lean, Kim Line. Um, and it is, I think, a Danish book. I'm going to screw this up. And it's set, I think, in Greenland. Oh. Oh, let me just double check. I'm to reach it on my shelf. Down. Yeah. Yeah, it's set in Greenland in 1787, oh, very good. Um, and it's a really chunky historical fiction book, um, and it's supposed to be um, amazing. And basically, it's about um, these um, the Danish church go over to Greenland, and they're trying to convert the um, the Inuit people. Oh yeah. Um, and it's about all the tragedies of that, and then um, sort of this. Um, I think maybe there's sort of this tragic romance going on as well behind the um, the um, the priest's back um and it's it's supposed to be amazing so i think a chunky sort of wintry historical fiction read sounds perfect will be good very good yeah what about you um i am going to pick up uh the bear and the nightingale after i finished um my books it is by Catherine arden it's a wintry um russian sort of folk story tale about a, a young girl which i'm very excited about and also have the proof copy of the second one which is the girl in the tower which is out at the beginning of february so i feel like i haven't done this in and i actually mean years where i've read the first in the series and then gone straight on and read the second in a series 
Yeah, that's always nice. So, so if I really like the bear in the nightingale, I've got the second one there ready, um, which is something that I feel very excited of the to have the opportunity to do. But I've also got a couple of buddy reads coming up as well. So you, I and Simon are going to be reading The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock, which I'm also excited about. Yep. That's, um, I also feel double excited about it because Jen tweeted about it last night saying it was giving her all tingles. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. So we're looking forward to reading that. That's out in February, isn't it? Yeah. That's February. Vintage's like lead debut for the first half of the year. Yeah. And I'm also going to buddy read Sufficient Grace with uh, Vanessa from Chbosky. So I've got a couple of buddy reads coming oh, up. Oh, that's a wintry and... one as well. Yeah. So I've got a lot of wintry reads coming up because you know how we are with seasonal reading, Mercedes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we want to get all the, the seasonal reading done. Um, I was going to say, I really yeah. am looking forward to your thoughts on the... Um... The Bear and the Nightingale because I've heard Have you read so, it? No, but I've heard so many people raving about it. Um, and just a complete mixture of readers, people who read yeah, entirely different that's things. I, it has been a complete mixture, yeah. Yeah. But I've been avoiding it, right? Because when it was first brought out, I I thought that it might be sort of like the Night Circus by yeah. Aaron Morgenstern and Uprooted by Naomi Novik, both of which I really don't like. No. And then I heard a few people mention it in reference to those two books, so I thought I'm definitely not going to read it. But then more and more people who are completely different readers have been reading it and really enjoying it. So I decided I'm going to wait until someone who knows my reading taste really well reads it so they can tell me whether they think I like it or not. And I am that person. You are that person, so it's all on you now. Okay, well, I'm going to pick that. That's probably what I'm going to next. So when I've finished off, whether or not I've managed to finish this shitty crime book off before book club or not, but yeah. that'll be the next one I pick up in terms of fiction. So I will start it at some point this week. Because I feel like if I do like it, I really want to read it, like soon, Yeah. it's wintry. Um, and I can just get it from the library because I'm sure they'll have a copy. I read um, the first page. When I picked it up, so it got delivered to David's parents' house. Yeah. When I picked it up, um, I was just reading the first page aloud to David and I in the car. And David was like, oh, that sounds really good, actually. And he never says that. Um, I, believe me, I'm always reading aloud to him. Yeah. He's like, oh, fuck's sake. But actually, he was like, oh, this actually sounds pretty good. And he wasn't telling me to shut up. <laughs> Not even <laughs> shut up. Like, he wasn't like, all right, that's enough now. He was letting me just go with it. That is good. Oh, yeah, I feel excited. It's got a good opener. Definitely. Atmospheric. And also, like, it's one of those ones where it's got a completely different cover in the US and the UK. Yeah. But I actually like both. Yeah, and I've got the, as I said, I've got the Proof of Girl in the Tower, and that's really pretty too. Yeah, yeah. Very nice front covers. Very exciting. I think the, the um, Girl in the Tower has already been out in the US. It is, because it's got a really cool cover. It's all like pinky orange, and it's a girl on a horse riding across a Oh, so that's what I've got, like a, a blue, dark blue with a tower on the front. It is yeah. gorgeous. They haven't got the, um, it doesn't say the girl on it, because it's a proof. It says yeah. it on the screen, but it is lovely. So, yeah, excited about those two. So, I really, that, I mean, honestly, I think the last time I read the first and then went on to like the second in a series was The Hunger Games when it first came out. Oh my God, that's so read, long. So, that's, that's like actual years ago. That's yeah, almost, so. I did it loads a couple of years ago because of the Robin Hood books. I just kept yeah. going. But I don't usually tend to do it if the series isn't completely out because you have that worry then. If you really love them and there's a third book, you're then going to have to wait like over a year. Yeah, I guess, because then did, cause The Bear and the Nightingale came out last year. Yeah, so it's just quite then, quick. Um, yeah, it's quite quick. But you're still going to have to have a year gap. Yeah. So that's why I tend not to I just do want it. to be really into a series again. I haven't yeah. been really into a series for such a long time. Yeah, do it, do it. But, but that would be nice, because sometimes having the wait like, is like, makes you realise how much you love something, because, you know, you get really impatient. About Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've just realised we haven't mentioned Daphne de Maurier once in this. Oh my god, you've just done it, haven't you? I I am going to say, um, now you've mentioned it, have you seen the new edition of Rebecca coming out this year? No. Yeah, the new edition coming out, mate. Well, it is an anniversary there. edition. Let me just check what it might be. I wonder what it is. is it 100 I might read really Rebecca. It comes out on the 1st of March, obviously from Virago. It's the 80th anniversary edition. I'm Googling it now. And it looks like, uh, sort of, um, it's white, and it looks like a handkerchief where someone's sewn in an R to it. But get this, it's got an introduction by Sarah Perry. Oh, my God! 80th it's anniversary. Hardcover. Becca. It looks beautiful. Hardcover. Let's have a look now. I might reread it this year. Yeah, I'm going to as well. Images. Oh, my God, it's beautiful. Oh, my God, that's beautiful. Yeah. I don't know whether it's... I, I'm, I think it's dust jacket. I don't think it's a naked hardback. Yeah, just look at... I mean, I've only got one picture to go on, but I would guess that that, that looks like dust jacket to me. Yeah. I don't think you could do that. It looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Gorgeous. When is that out? Um, it just in, in, um 1st of March. <gasps> Not long. 
Oh, I would like to reread that this year. I also want to read The Scapegoat as well. Apparently they have done a, they've done a very good adaptation of it that's got David and I's favourite actor, Andrew Scott, in it. Oh, okay. Um, the Scapegoat. It's about men. That's the only thing. It's about a man, an English man who meets a French man who's like his actual doppelganger. And then they, they spend like a drunken night, like just having a laugh and stuff like that. And then when he wakes up in the morning, he's stolen his identity. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, apparently the adaptation is very, very, very good. Um, so I'd like to read that. Yeah, you need to get on it. Early. Yeah, maybe I'll read it next month. Cool. So that's it anyway. Yeah. That is the podcast. There's nothing else to say. Anything else to say? No, I'm going to go have a nice bath now. Thank you so much. Oh, can I, oh, I don't think I've told you this in like real life. Um, I bought two Lush perfumes. Oh, yes, you did. You left a message for me on um, Rockstar and I listened to it and I was going to get back to you in the next day and say about it. Um, you've got, is it Smuggler's Cove, did you say one of them? Smuggler's Soul, Smuggler's yeah. Soul. Do you, you have that, that one? It is lovely. Oh, my God, it's so amazing. It's really, like, smoky yeah. and oh, it's amazing. When he wears it, every time he wears it, I'm like, what are you wearing? It smells so nice. And he says, it's so good. Says every time. It's so good. They've got, also, around Father's Day, because I feel like it's supposed to be, like, a unisex, but they, yeah. I think they market it more towards the men's. They bring out a whole range of, like, bath bombs and face Oh, really? I, that face, that's the face scrub I had when we went on holiday last year, and you used it. Oh yeah, that was really nice. And they bring out a um, like a body lotion, and yeah, this. Oh, I'll have to keep an eye out. So much. It's, it's a really nice. Scrub, say, June. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And they bring out a whole range of it, so definitely get some. And what was the other one? The other one's called Relentless, and it's definitely a more like womanly scent. Yeah. I can't even describe it. They describe it like when you look at the description as a really Did intense. You it on like online. No, I or went you... in store and I smelled oh, right. them all. Have they got uh, a big in um, Gorilla Perfume section then in the? Norwich in one? my one, it's like a little table. It's right near the door, so it's a bit yeah. awkward. Um, but I went in when it was fairly empty on like New Year's Day or whatever. Yeah. And luckily, no one asked whether I needed any help, which has got to be a first. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I wanted them all, to be completely honest, but um, I decided I, I really wanted some di- sort of different scents. Yeah. Um, and I usually wear quite sort of clean scents, so I decided to go for Relentless because it's quite spicy and quite sort of deep. Right. It, it's quite weird. Um, and when I get up in the morning, I, I smell both of them for ages because I'm like, I literally don't know which one I prefer. They're both so amazing. I love them. And every morning it's like this really happy moment where I have to be like, which one do I go for? Um, and honestly, I can smell them all day. Yeah. And when I was walking around the city yesterday, I had my coat and my scarf on and I could still smell Smuggler Soul whenever I moved. Yeah, it does hang around. And my favourite, and I've never owned it, but I, I will treat myself to it at some point, is Lust. Have you smelt that? I don't know if I smelt that one. Oh my god, it's so heavy. And like you say, I, I, every time I go into a lush, I put a little, I, I spray myself with it, and it lasts the whole day. And like, if I have it on my scarf or anything, the next time I put it on, it smells like that. I've yeah. got rose jam at the moment, which smells amazing. Yeah, there's but, just so many it, amazing ones. It's like really like sexy. I haven't smelt that one yet. Oh, it's That's lovely. a body spray, isn't it, rather than a perfume? What rose jam? Yeah. Jams the body spray, but again, yeah. it just stays all day. And like, if I spray myself with it, people come into my office all day and they're like, "Oh my god, it smells so nice in here." And people would say it smells like Turkish delight. Oh, tasty. Yeah, very nice. So yeah, so bonus, there's a little extra. Bonus extra lush perfume chat. So I would highly recommend everyone going because you know i just find i was going to smell perfumes in department stores and i was like boring 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 yeah. same old shit um and the lush stuff is just so um so different to everything yeah. else that's on offer out there and it's it's really and it's cool exactly exactly and i really like their packaging it's so simple but i yeah. really like it um and they it, smell so strongly as well they go a long way as well yeah yeah 100 sort of you have to like absolutely drown yourself in no, because no. it does smell lovely and strong yeah so well done lush yeah, thank you very much. Awesome. So yeah, that's it from us for January. Don't think we've got anything planned for February yet, have we? No. Nope. Start thinking about that. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> we were quite we were quite organised for this one. I think didn't we say we were going to re-record the Harry Potter one in February? Yeah, we do that. Yeah. Because we do like a chat about Harry Potter anyway. Yeah, that was fun. Lovely stuff. So yeah, if you want to get in touch with us, um, as I mentioned earlier, you can comment down below. That's probably where we're most likely to see your comment. You can tweet us at Books and Blanket. You can uh, get in contact with us on Instagram at Books and Blanket Podcast or email Books and Blanket Podcast at gmail dot com. And that's it. Happy Wonderful. New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. See you next month. See you next month. Bye. Bye.